Hi, my name is Bob Iaccino and welcome to the first in a series of educational webinars on futures trading brought to you by Plus500. Plus500 is a first trading platform designed for the retail trader. It's not a repurposed institutional platform. It was actually designed with you and me in mind. So speaking of me, why am I here? What's my background? Well, I, if I look familiar to you, it's because I've done over 3,000 financial television interviews as a guest analyst on CNBC, Fox News, Fox Business News, CNN, Bloomberg, Yahoo Finance, among others. So you may have seen my face before. I got my start in 1993, so almost 31 years of financial market experience, and I started on the floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange trading futures and clerking for futures traders. I went from there to become a chief market strategist for an institutional broker. I became the head of the institutional sales division for that particular broker, went on to another broker after that, spent time at a Chicago prop firm, managing their prop traders and covering the risk allocations to those prop traders. I ran a, a commodity market pool for a while. I became a principal one of the early investors and a member of the investment committee at a futures and Forex hedge fund. So a fund of hedge funds. And then I went to a boutique oil trading firm where I managed their oil trading hedging program, as well as was one of the traders trading options within their internal hedge fund. So I've held a lot of different roles in this industry. Currently, I'm the co-founder and chief market strategist at Path Trading Partners, as well as being the co-founder and president of Kingston Financial Market Research. And I'm here to talk to you about gold trading. I wanna talk about what gold is, why someone would consider trading gold, why trade gold with plus 500, key drivers of gold prices, future events you should look at, and also we'll take a look at the plus 500 trading platform. But before we do any of that, I wanna talk about this disclaimer that's at the bottom of your screen here. Trading in futures and options carries substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for every investor. This is very important to understand. While many markets offer leverage, futures markets trust you with a little bit higher leverage and you should take it seriously and understand that there is a risk of loss. Keep that in mind as I'm speaking throughout this. Keep in mind that margin cuts both ways and you should be very careful about how you use margin in any capacity, in any market. And again, I think futures market treats you like an adult, so you should respect that risk. Let's move on to what is gold. Definition, gold is a precious metal, symbol AU on the periodic table. It's valued for its rarity, malleability, and lustrous appearance. I think most of you knew all this. Uses, widely used in jewelry, electronics, and dentistry, and as an investment vehicle, that's what we're focusing on here. Historical significance, gold has a long history as a medium of exchange and a store of value. Known for its timeless beauty and resilience, gold has been valued for thousands of years in various cultures and applications. Resistance to corrosion, one of the reasons it's been valued. Gold is one of the least reactive chemical elements. It does not oxidize or corrode even in harsh environments. This makes gold items retain their appearance and integrity over long periods and thus retain their value. Non-reactivity, gold is inert to most chemicals. It does not react with air, water, or most acids, ensuring it remains untarnished and unchanged over time. And its density and heaviness, gold's high density contributes to its durability. It's not easily displaced or eroded, so ancient gold artifacts are often found in excellent conditions. Diversification. Gold provides a way to diversify investment portfolios. It's often seen as a hedge against inflation, as well as a hedge against currency devaluation. It's a safe haven asset. It tends to hold value during periods of geopolitical and economic uncertainty. We have a lot of both of those right now. Liquidity. Gold markets are highly liquid and they enable easy buying and selling. So trading gold at the CME group on plus 500. Gold has three contracts available on plus 500 through the CME group. They have different contract sizes 
and they have different ticker symbols, virtually the same trading hours, and they have different settlement processes, which is very important. The standard gold future can have physical delivery or cash settlement. That's why I think the best option for most retail traders is the micro gold futures. It's only 10 troy ounces per contract. That means that the moves, the tick moves, which go every 10 cents, is only 10 cents times 10 ounces or $1. So it's a very easy and manageable situation for the average trader. Key drivers of gold prices. Well, you've got economic indicators, inflation rates, higher inflation typically drives gold prices up and interest rates, lower interest rates often boost gold demand. I wanna talk a little bit about these economic indicators. When you talk about higher inflation typically driving gold prices up, this is if central banks are not fighting that higher inflation, if they're leaving rates stagnant. If they are not leaving rates stagnant, meaning they're hiking rates, it goes against the second point of lower interest rates and they contradict each other a little bit. So keep that in mind. Geopolitical events, wars, elections, political instability, they can increase gold's safe haven appeal. Again, we have a lot of that going on right now. So that's why gold has been active and why it's an important time to talk about it. Supply and demand, mining output versus consumer demand, changes in gold production level, and then the demand for jewelry, gold in technology, and demand as an investment vehicle affects gold's price. And also currency fluctuation. Gold is usually inversely related or correlated to the US dollar. Now it's not a 100% inverse correlation. It's closer to a round, let's call it the high 70, low 80 percentile. So that means it does not inversely correlate in all situations. You have to keep that in mind. Correlation is not really a trading strategy. Future events to watch, monetary policy changes. And this applies to what I just said about whether the Fed is fighting inflation or not. And in current times, this in particular matters. Are central bank decisions on interest rates and quantitative easing affecting the price of gold? If they're not making any moves at all, then gold will, will tend to react just with inflation. But if monetary policy is being moved around and changed, Gold will react in relation to inflation and in relation to what the monetary policy is aimed at in terms of the direction of inflation. Geopolitical tensions, economic data releases, GDP, unemployment rates, inflation statistics, global demand trends, shift in demand for major markets like China and India. That also applies to the seasonality of gold. For example, toward the end of July in through about the beginning of September is a seasonal strong point for gold based on festival seasons in India and China. That does not always mean gold will go up in those seasons, but it's important to know that. Special mention for technological advances. Innovations in gold extraction and recycling processes can affect the price of gold because older gold getting recycled back into the system through technology actually increases the supply. So that's an important thing to think about as well. Now let's take a look at the plus 500 trading platform and talk more about potentially trading gold at the CME group through plus 500. All right, so here we are on the plus 500 platform. You can see over here that I'm on the all popular tab and here are most of the, or really all of the most popularly traded items at the CME group. Um, you can see S&P is at the top and you'll see that most of the time. You can see that S&P is highlighted in this blue and you can see that matches the chart down below. Now we're going to be talking about gold. There's a couple of things I want to show you on the platform before we actually look at the gold chart. Number one, there's several ways that you can find gold. First of all, you can just scroll down here and I'm going to be looking at the micro gold. So you can see that it's right here and you could just click on it. The other thing you could do is you could go to the metals tab and you could scroll down here. You can see there's standard gold and then there's micro gold. Down here is the e-mini gold. Or you could go to the micros themselves because you know that we're going to talk about micro gold and scroll through those and you can see down here is the micro gold. Now the chart down here is micro Bitcoin. 
There's one more way to do it, and you can search the instruments. Now, I've typed these three in over the last couple of days, so they pop up really quickly. But if you don't see them here, you'll just type them in. Click on Micro Gold, and a couple of things happen. First of all, we get right to where we want to be, which is Micro Gold in the chart down here, highlighted in blue on my main screen. But you also get a trade ticket. Now, you may have noticed that you can trade right from the home screen here. There's buy, there's sell. But also in this trade ticket, there's other information. Here again is buy and sell. Here we've got the change on the day. You can see the market is closed right now. But we've also got live statistics, meaning that in the last 60 minutes, gold has actually risen by a tenth of a percent. The last five minutes, there's been no move because the gold itself is closed. And during the course of the trading day, it was down 0.72%. Why are these in percentages? Because percentages is the way that you become a professional trader. The way that you act like a successful trader is by thinking in percentages. And hopefully I'll get a chance to do a whole series on that as well. But thinking in percentages is a smart thing. It's a professional thing. And it's about longevity. If you want to see the actual number of dollars and cents that gold fell, you can see it fell $17.00 and 80 cents or 178 ticks, right? But that's basically your issue right here is the percentages are the way that you start to think more positively and more professionally about trading regardless of the outcomes of your trades. You scroll down and you can see your day margin levels of $50, commissions including exchange fees and NFA is $1.01. One. The full breakdown of margin levels is in this section down here availability so when we look at the chart you're going to see that when i hover over today's micro gold bar the date's going to say august 4th the candle will have the entire day's activity from the start of the trading day sunday night august 4th to the end of the trading day monday afternoon august 5th the next trading day will begin monday 6 p.m on august 5th and it'll end tuesday at 5 p.m that in information is down here also, additional information like units per contract, tick size, single contract value is all on this trade ticket. But we don't really need this right now. I want to show you one more piece of functionality here. I have my, what I call my go-to watch list here. The first thing I look at in the morning. You notice that I have the Dow, the S&P, the Russell, the Euro, the Yen, the NASDAQ, copper, and crude oil. I'm missing gold. If I go back to all popular and i go back to micro gold notice how the nasdaq 100 has a star on it i'm going to star micro gold you could see it says add to a new watch list or add to an existing watch list i'm going to just go ahead and add it to my watch list and that's how you slowly build a watch list you can move them by just highlighting those little six dots and move it to where you think it should be for example I think gold should be above copper, and I think NASDAQ should be above the Russell. So that's how you move these, and this is how you create a functional watch list on plus 500. But let's go back to what we were going to talk about here, which is the micro gold. Here's the chart. I want to expand the chart, and I want to pull it up full screen, which you get this little icon right here. Okay, now right now the cursor is showing me the daily values. If for some reason that bothers you, you click here and you can hide the heads up display. I'm going to leave it up so that we know what we're talking about. I also want to go to a daily chart, which is this little measuring icon right here. And I'm going to scroll down and click on daily. We could also look at a weekly and I will probably come back to a weekly in a minute. But first, I'm going to go to a daily chart. Now, I have no indicators on this chart. I'm going to go to the indicators tab here and put up a couple of my favorites. Now. We've got common indicators. We've got the indicator library. We've got categories of indicators right here, momentum oscillators, where you might find something like the RSI. But in case you're new, I'm gonna go right to the indicator library and I'm gonna scroll down here and you'll notice that down here we have that same RSI. So I'm gonna click on it and put it on the chart. Now, when I hover my mouse over it, it shows me it's a 14 period RSI. I like a 10. So I'm going to right click it. I'm going to edit the settings. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to make it a 10 day or a 10 period. 
you can see the slight shift in the way it's oscillating here. And you can see these shaded areas are when we went into overbought territory, right? Here, we didn't really get much of a sell-off. Here, we got hardly any sell-off. Here, we got hardly any sell-off. That tells you just visually that the RSI is not a trade in and out indicator. So don't try to use it as one. Now I can go ahead and show you that when I highlight this, you look down below and you see that that's showing it as August 4th. That's because that's the session that opened on August 4th, Sunday night, and closed Monday, August 5th. So the date represents when this particular candle or market opened. Let's keep an eye on that. I'm going to put another couple of indicators on here. I like exponential moving averages. So I'm going to go to common indicators this time. And because I use them a lot, here are my EMAs. But I could also go to the indicator library and just scroll down and find moving averages. All right, I'm going to hit the moving average. Now, why did I just hit moving average? Because you notice as soon as I put it up, it gives me option to change it. So I click on type and I change to exponential. Now, I like an 8 and a 21. So I'm going to make this the 21. And I like my 21 to be more of a greenish color. So that's done. Now, this time I'm going to click it again and I'm going to go into common indicators, which you can see the EMAs are here. It gives me that same 50 day simple. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to edit settings. I'm going to make this an eight. And I'm going to change this to like a purplish magenta right over here. And I'm going to make sure I hit done. And there it is. I've got my two exponential moving averages on my screen. Now, in this particular price action, nothing is really being shown to me. But I want to show you one more thing before we end this quick lesson. I'm going to go to a weekly chart really quick. Now, on a weekly chart, you could see how gold has been sort of hugging the moving averages. I don't trade moving average crosses. Why? Because in areas like this, you end up with all kinds of consolidation where the moves are unpredictable. But when you get a cross up like we had here the week of October 22nd, if you go back and look at some of my old TV interviews, you'll see that I'm long since about November of 2023. That's when I put on a gold position, a longer term gold position. It had nothing to do with its cross. It had more to do with the test of these moving averages and then a rally. All right. So you can see here the moving averages are guiding this in a direction and they're widening out and pushing the market up. It is still sort of happening on a weekly basis, but it is not happening on a daily basis. And it is not happening on a four hour basis. As a matter of fact, on a four hour basis, we closed lower. So gold is virtually giving me no signal right now. If I go back to the daily and I look at where the RSI is, it's in neutral territory. It's not overbought or oversold. So while gold is down three consecutive sessions, it's not really giving us any direction right now. So it would not be something that I would be looking to trade today. But if you go back to some of these earlier moves that we've gotten, it's clear that you should be paying attention to gold. So I hope you learned a little something here about what moves gold, learned a little something about the platform, and just to go back to what I was trying to explain to you earlier, you need to remember that trading in futures and options carries substantial risk of loss, and it's not suitable for every investor. This disclaimer at the bottom of my screen right now is a thing that needs to be taken seriously. It's not something to be ignored. It is something to be understood. In this current environment, gold is selling off because all risk assets are being sold. Why is that? Because there's embedded leverage in every market. When that leverage comes home to roost, which is what this disclaimer right here is talking about, when that leverage comes home to roost, if you weren't aware of it, you have to sell things that you have gains in in order to cover other positions. And that's what we're seeing right now in this overall risk sell-off. So keep in mind this disclaimer. Keep in mind that this Plus 500 platform, it was built for you. Keep in mind that gold is something you should be watching.